Hello YouTube, welcome to the channel. If you get something out of the content that I put up here, I'd really appreciate it if you subscribe and give me a like on these videos. It can make a real difference in the algorithms and how they share content with other channels. Also, if you're interested in some one-on-one -on -one Skype sessions, you'll find a good email on me in the description of every video I put up. Hey guys, today we're going to talk about bluegrass fill licks and continue our playlist on licks that we started a few months back. Before we jump in, I do have some Wayne's World of Mandolin stickers. One of my students hooked me up with, I think, about a hundred of these, maybe even more. But anyway, the only way to get this is going to be to win a contest. I'm going to start playing some kind of a lick or phrase on the end of every video, and it should be something that you recognize the mandolin player that played it and the tune that it's from. So we'll start that with today's video and then I'll mail you the sticker if you're the winner. Just put it in the comments. The first one with the correct answer of the player and the tune is going to win the Wayne's World of Mandolin sticker. So anyway, bluegrass fill licks. If you're not fam you know, familiar with this and if you don't really do this as a bluegrass mandolin player already, you could think of it as kind of the equivalent of a G run on guitar and then maybe a rhythm swell that would follow that G run. These phrases that I'm going to demonstrate today would occupy that same amount of musical space. I'm going to demonstrate this in G today. We could easily make a full video on each different key signature, but with G being such a common bluegrass chord to play out of, and jam sessions can get in the key of G and stay there, you know, maybe for a couple of hours or so much material to do in that key. So this is something that kind of happens like within the context of your chop. If you're chopping along in the groove and you want to swell between a, a vocal line, we would have a, what we would think of as a rhythm swell where you let the mandolin breathe or open up a little more and state the chord with a strum. That could be considered a fill or a swell. If you ever get a chance to watch Doyle Lawson and Tony Rice, some of the live bluegrass album band videos that are here on YouTube. Look at their two right hands. It's like they're just chained together when they play those swells. So that's going to be our point of reference for how good this should feel when you do it. So here's some other examples. If we were chopping along and then I could play... Maybe go to a two-fingered version of a G chord. That way we get a little bit more of a sustaining kind of sound than we would with the... G and the D note here is part of that chop chord. Very common. This could be... Arguably even a little more powerful here in the key of G. So now some things that I've noticed players doing. On the Manzanita record, um, there's a cut called I Hope You Have Learned. Sam Bush's rhythm playing on that, he would actually go up to a C shape. Some of you guys that have been into bluegrass for a long time may remember Charlie Waller doing that on guitar and going to a four chord as a fill in his rhythm, even though the rest of the band was just staying in the one chord. So that nice little pedal kind of feel. push into that C. So now chop along. So there's another nice version of a swell that's just rhythmic. We're not really playing any individual notes yet. We're going to get to that. So something that I like to do that's kind of an, uh, an expansion, if you want to call it that, on what Sam was playing there, I'll go up to this double stop where I'm, I'm playing a flat 7 note. That's the F when we're playing in the key of G. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. I'm playing a flat 7. And then 
the fifth scale degree, a D note there, which makes a nice G7 chord. We've got the root, flat 7, and the fifth. And then I'll go back down to the C, and then back to the G. This, can, this makes a nice little rhythmic thing on a bluesier sounding tune that you may be playing. I've gotten a lot of mileage out of that feel, and you can see that it starts with a slide from the second and third fret, a C shape that we recognize, sliding up to three and five, back down to the C, and all of this is happening playing through the strings. It isn't, it's not just the double stops. So this move, I'm still playing the G, D, and the A strings, and then back to all four pairs of strings after that move over the double stops. So there was a combination of both of them where I went up to this seven chord and then added that pedal that I had first learned from Sam on the Manzanita record cut. So this is all just kind of some rhythmic stuff you can do to fill in those holes and make the music more dynamic in a jam session. Now other phrases that you're going to be familiar with. Look at that one. These are really interesting because we have to go from the feel of our rhythm playing into single notes. And you really need to land these and stick them nice and hard because if you played soft, then it's not, the whole purpose of this feel is to dynamically make the music rise in these little holes. So there I'm going to play those notier kinds of feels and we'll talk about a few variations on those. Straight chop. Now notice that. All down with my right hand. I have a video that talks about that uh, exclusively here on the channel. All down pick direction, I think is the name of the video. But that fill, look how it's just the shape of this arpeggio under your left hand or your chop chord. The only embellishment really is a slide from the first to the second fret. And I'm playing that as a fill in between chops. Now I want to I want to weave my way back into the rhythm playing. A lot of times what works really well for me is to do a rhythmic thing after the notier part of the fill. I'm going to take some tempo off of that. So this is a Bill Monroe influence thing that I'm playing. I'm just the G and the D strings here. And look at that little hammer on, if you wanted to think of it that way, from the fourth to the fifth fret. You could double it like that. That's a nice way to transition back into your chop. So you can practice that. Just hit your chop. And you can hear how I have that, um, you know, really rollicking kind of sound over this G. And then it settles back into where the pocket would be. So the things to look for when you play that feel, as you're playing that rhythm, Listen to the bass player, listen to the banjo roll, so that your chop can land right back in the groove with everything else that's happening. This is a, a great thing to practice and to loop like that, because you have to make that transition from the, the rhythmic feel of your right hand, and then into playing individual notes, in this case, all down. So there's quite a contrast between the, the amount of motion that you have with your right hand, and you're chopping, and then all of a sudden, 
that amount of motion reduces to just playing through one pair of strings and we're going all down. So there's quite a transition there. That might even be something that helps you to transition from your rhythm playing into your solos if you have an issue in that transitional thing that happens before we get ready to play a break because you don't have to chop along and then stop and miss two or three of your mandolin chops like to set up for your break. I see that happen with people at times in jam sessions, even some guys on stage with a bad habit like that, weaving in and out with these fill licks and doing it as an exercise in this way could even help you with that bigger problem that might exist in your plan that you just haven't noticed. So let me demonstrate that a couple of more times, looping this as an exercise. Check it out, I moved up an interval instead of instead of starting on the root note, you'll hear this feel. Where we move up to the third, one, two, three, above that G. You can play this one straight. Or you could put that slide. You can make it a longer. You know, this is all, you know, you can be very creative with all of it, but the difference between that. Sometimes it feels like that third interval can kind of cut the rest of the band better, meaning that you might hear the mandolin better starting on that higher interval. You get that punchy. So you may want to experiment with um, the same thing and kind of loop that into your chop, play that fill into the swell, then back to your chop using that version starting on the third scale degree. So hopefully this helps today uh, with this whole job of filling those holes up and trying to swell and listen to each other and have a, a really open mind about altering the way all of this feels because it's a response to what the rest of the rhythm section does. Okay, for our first contest here for the Wayne's World of Mandolin sticker, I'm going to play a Really short little lick. You should recognize this. I'm going to make the first one real easy. And this is in G also because everything that we've done today is, has been around a G chord. So I'm going to play this. The first person in the comments to get it right, the song and the picker will win the sticker. Here we go. Good luck. 